The Xenomorph is one amazingly adaptable creature. When we're first introduced to Big Chap, the original alien horror, a sleek, powerful, and deadly machine. Next in the franchise, we see the aliens in mass, sporting a slightly updated design along with their matriarch, the Alien Queen. With the third installment to the Alien series, we meet the Runner Alien, a fresh take on an old nightmare. In the first two Alien movies, the hosts for the creatures were human. Without seeing a Xenomorph from a non-human host, we can only guess just how far the Alien would go in order to incorporate traits of its host. It wouldn't be until the Xenomorph encounter on Fury 161 that we'd see an alien birth from an animal host. The design of this alien may have been new, but the idea of an alien that didn't stand on two legs was not a new one. We can go all the way back to an article in the official Alien Movie magazine in which Ridley Scott says, and I quote, The next generation takes on characteristics of whatever form it landed on. The article then says that this means that the alien may not always be a biped. It could conceivably be a combination of the original facehugger and whatever host it uses. The Dark Horse comic book Aliens Rogue gives us the term DNA reflex to describe the process that the xenomorph embryo undergoes while inside the host subject. An important part of this reflex was the stance of the host, as the aliens always seem to mimic this trait, be it walking on two or four legs. This alien, or the dragon as it was known to the prisoners of Fury 161, showed considerably different motives and hunting techniques than the xenomorph encountered by the Nostromo crew, or the multiple specimens confronted by the colonial marines on LV-426. The first meeting featured a smooth domed alien that used stealth and ambush tactics in order to hunt its prey. Here the alien would even start to create a hive area where it was thought to be egg morphing captured crew members. In the second encounter, the aliens were heavily influenced by their queen, falling into a well-defined order. With the third encounter, the specimen is solitary at first, until it learns that Ripley is carrying an alien queen. The xenomorph would then choose to not harm Ripley, showing that it had the instinct to protect even the host of its own species. As for the hunting tactics of the runner, it was similar to the Nostromo alien in that it used stealth tactics. However, Perhaps driven by a need to protect its upcoming queen, the alien was insanely aggressive as it killed anyone it could find, choosing not to take any prisoners. It is possible that the alien would begin to take prisoners for hosts once the new queen is established and that this alien was even taking people out in order to make a safe area for the queen, but this situation never presents itself. The runner alien, as seen in Alien 3, has a brown or almost rust-colored hue to its exoskeleton. It seems to move faster than its bipedal alien brethren, even being able to stick to walls and ceilings very easily. This alien was able to stand upright, rivaling the size of the bipedal aliens. Strangely enough, this runner alien was missing a major part to its life cycle, the chestburster stage. The Weyland yutani report states that the company had no data to suggest that the runner-type xenomorph that Ellen Ripley encountered lacked the chestburster form or if that form was just unseen. They do believe, however, that the information on the encounter suggests that the alien embryo employs gene targeting to introduce point mutation, allowing for the creature to borrow from and adopt its host DNA in order to restructure its own form. When we see the birth from the Xeno, be it from the dog or from the ox in the novelization or the Alien 3 assembly cut, the alien enters the world in its normal adult form, only much smaller. There have been many theories as to why this alien did not exist in the host in the chestburster form. First off, it's possible that the runner simply has no chestburster form and grows from the embryo into this young alien. Or it could be that because the host died before birth, that this alien didn't develop correctly and simply couldn't get out in chestburster form and had to wait until growing larger to be able to exit. Beyond the obvious difference in stance of the runner alien, another big change was the lack of dorsal tubing. This was most likely done for practical reasons, as with this new quad stance, the alien's head would normally sit above the back, right where the dorsal tubes would be, not allowing for movement of the head. H.R. Giger did note that he didn't like the tubes in the original artwork and film, and that the newer alien with a longer rib cage and no dorsal tubes was a better and much sleeker look. The only drawback was that the film originally had H.R. Giger attached to help design this runner, only to go with ADI instead to finish the concept. 
This end product lacked the biomechanical look of the first alien, looking more organic than its previous iterations. Another new trait of the runner alien is its ability to spit acid blood. We would see this ability in the clone xenomorphs of Alien Resurrection and again in the Aliens Extended Universe. Much of the online information for the runner aliens show them as being weaker and less durable than other Xenos from the earlier movies, but they list the AVP2 video game as a reference for this, so I wouldn't put much stock into that. To me, the runner was able to lift up people and rip them apart just as easily as Big Chap. We never saw it hit with any weapons fire to test its durability, but it should be noted that the previous aliens feared fire, for good reason, whereas the runner survived molten lead, albeit we only see it live for a few moments afterwards when it's doused with water and explodes. To me, Alien 3, especially the assembly cut, is a good movie, but it just doesn't hold up as well as Alien and Aliens. Yet the bright spot of this film was the introduction of the runner Alien. This would add even more adaptability to the species, making them even deadlier and allowing for endless variations. And that's it for the Runner Aliens, guys. I want to thank everyone for watching. The channel growth lately has been amazing, and I have you guys to thank for it. All of your likes, comments, shares, and subscriptions go a long way towards helping this channel grow. Thanks again, everybody. Take care, and I hope to see you next time.